chapter 1, and by way of introduction, let me say that uh, uh, I've had people ask me about the, the messages that we're planning on uh, doing the series of messages on the uh, emergent church, mega church, modern church uh, movement. And that, Lord willing, is coming up in January. Starting the first Sunday night in January, four Sunday nights in January. And if it don't snow one of them or something like that, uh, we'll do that all four Sunday nights in January. Just like we did the messages on the church, uh, the Baptist, his, historic Baptist church, uh, this past January. I had a lot of response. I had a lot of preachers say, do you care if I use that material? Matter of fact, somebody come to camp meeting and borrowed my chart uh, to take it back to a church in South Carolina and do it. And uh, so I'm putting a lot of time into this and a lot of effort. And the reason I'm doing it is not to be critical of anybody trying to do anything for God. That's not my intention. I, I got better stuff to do than that. But that you might know the truth and that other people might know the truth. Uh, there's some strange stuff going on these days, y'all. Churches are getting weirder and weirder. And if you say anything about it, you are a terrible, judgmental person. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, Lord have mercy, though, people. You got to draw a line somewhere. And there's some stuff going on tonight uh, in churches. There's, there's a fella by the name of Carl Lentz who pastors Hillsong, New York. And the Hillsong churches began nearly 30 years ago in Australia, and they've spread around. They got them in New York and different places and different, uh, looking like, like that, you know. And um, they, they're, 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 like, they're like these, you know, like Elevation, like some of these other places around there, and they're like that. You can't say that, I, I don't say they're not saved, they're not like that. They might be, might be sincere. But, you know, they cannot pin that fella down and get him to give an answer on what he, his views on homosexuality. Will not answer. Will not. And he keeps saying, well, uh, if somebody was in my private office and they asked me, I'd tell them, but I'm not going to get into a political issue. Stuff like that. Will not answer. Now, I'm going to tell you something, people. There's something wrong when a preacher can't give you a straight answer if something's right or wrong. I don't care if it is political. I don't care if half the church does get mad and leave. No, you don't want that, but you know what I'm saying. It don't matter. It don't matter. We are called to preach the word, the word. And he's saying, uh, he's saying uh, we have a stance on love. And other than that, we don't have a stance on anything. He said we have a preference about everything else. We have a stance on love. And he said, Jesus didn't say anything publicly about homosexuality, so I shouldn't. He does something. There's always a way to wiggle out of it if a man's trying to wiggle out of it. And I'm going to tell you tonight, people, uh, that is doing a disservice. This is Justin Bieber's pastor, by the way. And old Bieber, he might have got religion. I hope he did. I hope he got right. I don't know if he did or not. He run over a reporter the other night coming out of church. Did y'all hear about that? Justin Bieber hit a reporter. Uh, they was trying, trying to take pictures of him. He about run this guy over. And they had the guy in the hospital and he was doing an interview of him. He said, isn't that something? One hour from my birthday and I get run over by Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, sort of funny. Uh, but old Justin, he might have got right with God. I hope he did. He cancels the concerts, hallelujah. He believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, I'm all for it, all happy. But there's a lot more to it than that. And we're gonna be studying about that in the month of January. Don't get nervous. Don't feel uneasy. Or un the Bible should not make you nervous at all. You should say, hey, pastor, let her rip. Give it to us just like it is, and we'll take it. You don't expect it to be popular with the world, do you? I mean, if you've got a preacher that's popular with the world, he is a messed up individual. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 tonight, and we're going to look at just that thought this evening. Look at verse number, uh, uh, number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you. The church there is espoused. That word means engaged. We are not married to the Lord yet. People say, well, we're the wife of Jesus. No, 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 no. We are the bride-to-be of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The wedding in the sky has not yet taken place. We are espoused, engaged, promised to him. To one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now look what he tells the church. But I fear, lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Now, is there another Jesus? Uh, not, not really, not the real Jesus. But he means somebody who preaches somebody who they say is Jesus, but not really Jesus. Another Jesus. Or, look what he said. Or you receive another spirit, which you have not received. So there must be another spirit. Or another gospel, which you have not accepted. You might well bear with him. I'm going to show you in January how some of those churches, they believe in a nutshell, the most important message of the church today is acceptance, tolerance, make the world a better place, and save the environment. That's their ministry. That's their ministry. None of which is mentioned in the Bible as a ministry of a real local church. We're not called to make the world a better place. We're called to call people out of the world so the Lord, because the Lord, did you know one of them, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the quote where the guy says, uh, uh, he said that any message that says God's gonna burn the world up is toxic and should not be preached and is immoral. He said it's immoral uh, for a preacher to believe that God's gonna burn the world up. Immoral. Uh, listen, I don't, what does that guy, what does he read? Where in the world did he get that? He said if God comes and burns the world up, he is nothing more than a spiritual jihadist. That's right. And I'll give you the quote. They say that, they say that uh, 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 the, uh, if, if God let his son be punished for our sins, he is guilty of divine child abuse. He said, when my wife sins against me, I don't say I forgive you and go kick the dog. He said, I don't have to take out my wrath on something else uh, to prove you know, how perverted and twisted. I don't know if a saved person can think like that. Right. Something ain't right somewhere. God did allow his son to be punished for our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What that fellow don't understand is that the holiness of God demands that sin be paid for and the death of the son of God paid the debt of all mankind on the cross and he's robbing millions of people of salvation by saying that it didn't take the death of God's son. It sure did. It sure did. Thank God for the substitutionary, vicarious death on the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ to die for my sorry sin. Hallelujah for the cross. Hallelujah, he died for me. If you wanna call him a spiritual, jihad, uh, a spiritual jihadist, you'll take that verse and go to hell with it when you leave this world. I'm telling you tonight, that is another gospel and another Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, they, they say they're trying to make it cool. Uh, 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 they, uh, General William Booth, years ago, great man, he said our next generation, our generation, will be characterized by religion without spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without regeneration, morality without God, and heaven without hell. They say that if the Holy Ghost of God left this world on Saturday night, most churches could carry out business as usual and never notice one bit of difference. That's the sad state that we find ourselves in in this generation. Turn to James chapter number one here this evening. James chapter number one. And let's look here at another verse of scripture. While I'm uh, uh, reading here, and then I'm gonna bring you a few thoughts on this tonight. James chapter one and verse number 27. You see all these churches now? One church put on their website, church without religion. 
church without religion. Don't that sound cool? Don't the hipsters just love that? Hey, man, you don't have to be religious to go to that church. And other churches put, tired of religion? Come to our church. It don't resemble religion at all. Now, you know what they're talking about. They're talking about religion in a bad sense. But religion's not a bad thing if it's right kind of religion. You want me to prove that? James 1, 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to go on bus route, for you that don't understand it. Visit the fatherless people that ain't got father and mother to help them and widows, man, woman that ain't got a husband in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from this old world. There's nothing wrong with pure religion. We've come to a point in our generation where we give, oh, it, that's just religion. That's, and I know what you, I, I say that same thing, but we're talking about when we say that false religion, pharisaical religion, yeah. some kind of other fake religion that, that, that'll, that'll, uh, that's works and stuff like that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about pure religion and undefiled before God, a set of beliefs, a belief system. That don't get you to heaven, but it helps us to practice pure religion. Now tonight, I want to preach just a few minutes this evening on the subject, give me that old time religion. It was good enough for our fathers and thank God it's good enough for me and you. Tonight, I want to say a few things about it and the first thing I want to say is it receives the message through the power of God. Uh, uh, Old time religion, as we call it, is preaching the message in the power of God. In other words, there's a difference between a person just saying, Jesus died on the cross, or uh, do you believe that? Shake my hand, sign a card right here. You're saying, there's a difference in that and saying those very same words in the power of God. Paul said, when I came to you, my preaching was not with enticing words or of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, old time religion has some power behind it. In Acts chapter 16, listen to this, and verse number 14, the Bible said there's a lady there named Lydia, and the Bible said this woman whose heart the Lord opened. The Lord opened her heart. Now, it did not mean that God laid her down on an operating table and took a literal knife and cut her physical. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about he opened her innermost being to the truth and to the gospel. Old time religion will open your heart to the gospel. I remember the night I got saved, the Lord opened my heart. And I'm telling you, people, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with these weird conversions that we're seeing today. I'm not trying to be uh, uh, nitpicky, and I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I remember back when we got saved and and even down through the years when people, I mean, it meant something to get saved. It did something to you. I mean, mean, the second you say that, people go, oh, you're saying if people don't do this, this, they really didn't. I didn't say that at all. I think there are some people that get saved that never do grow. They stay, stay sort of babies all their life. I get it. I understand that. Don't you accuse me of adding works to salvation because you are crazy if you do. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I remember back in the, when I got saved, brother, it done something to us. It, I, we thought different. You, you think different. It ain't like, okay, now I gotta start doing this. I'm a Christian. We automatically hungered for the word of God. I had a thought, I want to go to church. I didn't, they didn't have to hunt me down and say, we're gonna do this again next week. I said, when are we doing this again? They said, tomorrow night. Brother, we was there. There's something wrong with a generation of Christians that has no desire for church, no desire for God, no desire for the word, no desire for fellowship, no desire at all. Some may right somewhere. Old time religion, and you just right, will give you the desire for them. Listen, when I got saved, when we got right with God, we burned our rock music. Burned it in a trash can. What's happened to us now? Lord, they bring in the church. I'm gonna show you some. I'm gonna show you Furtick down there in Charlotte playing his guitar on stage and everybody all getting up and saying, 
I love rock and roll. Boom, 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 boom. On the stage in the house of God. Now, if you don't like that, I don't know what your problem is, but there's something wrong with saying a wicked rock song in the house of God. That used to be normal preaching, what I'm doing right now. Nowadays, it's, well, now let's not be judging. Let's not be judging. Lord, everything comes in now. Amen? I try and be ugly. Listen, brother, used to, it made a difference when you got saved. It made a difference when you got right with God. It made a difference. Hey, I remember I wanted, I wanted to clean up. I wanted to clean my, we took our rock albums and brother and tapes and we put them in a big old barrel and everybody brought them out and we set them things on fire and boy, I remember people said they seen demons coming up in that black smoke and everything. Boy, people said all kinds of stuff. I don't know if that's true, but I remember we said we burned it. We burned rock and roll music. I'm just old fashioned enough. I know your old daddy, he's old now and everything, but I'm telling you, I was eight. 18 then. I was 18 then. And I still believe when your heart gets right with God, and I mean you totally surrender, there's still something in you. When you put rock music in there, something says that ain't right. That You can't tell me. You can't tell me God told us it was wrong and tells you it's all right. Now somebody ain't right. Somebody got an own spirit somewhere. Was it us or this crowd? Amen. Somebody did. That's another spirit. That's another gospel. I'm not preaching you gotta have works to be saved. I'm not preaching there's anything you can do to gain God's favor. I'm preaching the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, not creation, creature, and old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. I've seen them get saved and go to the refrigerator and take a, a six pack of beer out and dump it down the sink. I've seen them do it. I, nobody told them it's wrong. Nobody said a word about it. I'm telling you, old time religion will get down inside you. It'll make you turn that TV off when something wicked comes on there. Sure it will. I'm not preaching. Old brother Danny's preaching against that. Listen, brother, I ain't preaching. You do what you want to. You, you, if you can sit there and watch naked people on TV and it don't bother you, and you can say, Lord, bless this tonight, Lord. Have at it. I'm telling you, there's, you might be a reprobate if you can do that. I'm telling you, you know good and well, and you ought to thank God that you feel conviction. You ought to thank God that you still feel guilty. You ought to thank God that he still deals with you a little bit once in a while. Amen. Listen, since we are born into God's family, we should bear some kind of family resemblance. You know, uh, uh, my, my girls, people say that all the time. They say, them girls look just like you, Brother Danny. We ought to eat over here some pizza place. And that one says, she said, I can always tell what's in yours and, and, you know, and, and your family looks like you. Unfortunately or fortunately, it depends on the case. You know what? Uh, we, we, you bear resemblance to your family. I'm, I'm little boned like my daddy. I'm just about the same size as my daddy. I'm a little bit fatter in my neck. I was on my mom's side of the family. They had fat necks. And I got a little bit from that, but I'm, my bones are, are, are like my daddy, and I bear resemblance. And I'm gonna tell you something, people. If you are in God's family and around God, there's gonna be some resemblance to you as, for a Christian. There's gotta be. There's gotta be. There's got to be. The Lord said, come out from among them and be separate. Who's them? Who is the them? I mean, I mean, people, I, Lord, you ain't gonna believe the stuff I'm gonna show y'all in the month of January, what's going on in churches tonight. No kind of, I, people get mad if you preach, people ought to dress right. Oh, Brother Danny, you're preaching word. But you know what'll happen? A preacher, whatever a preacher won't preach on, his church will fill up with. Whatever a preacher won't preach on, his church will fill up. People will do whatever a preacher will let them get by with. Boy, Lord in mercy, I didn't know I was gonna say none of that in the last few minutes. Gospel message is effective everywhere. Amen? It pleased God 
by the foolishness of preaching. I'm gonna give you a quote of a man who says, preaching don't work anymore. That's what he said. Preaching don't work anymore. And what they're saying is, since it ain't working, let's try something that does work. So the main goal is getting something that'll work. That ain't the main goal. God, when Noah was building that ark, his main goal was not get something that'll work. His main goal was preach, he was a preacher of righteousness and he preached and he preached and he preached and he preached. He had zero converts, 120 years. Him and his family is all he had in his church. Nobody else come. Nobody else, I mean, if that had been nowadays, they'd have said, Noah, you, you, we need a band. Noah, we need a TV ministry. Noah, we need this because this ain't working. We're not getting the people in. The main thing is share the message of Jesus. You know, they don't say the Lord Jesus Christ, they say Jesus. Jesus, you know, it's some kind of weird, it must be the wrong Jesus they're talking about. I'm telling you, he's, he, he, Jesus could mean, hey, I've met people around here named Jesus. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul called him all the way through the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ. And then you know who we're talking about. The only son of God. I'll give you a quote, Brian Houston. He's the original Hillsong pastor in Australia. I mean, you know who I'm talking about? Raise your hand, please. You see the hill song, you know, shout to the Lord all the earth. You know, them people do that. And, uh, uh, Brian Houston, the, the original pastor of hill song, where he says, to, we pray to us, it's God. To the Muslim, it's Allah. We all pray the same God. And that Hillsong stuff is taking over the world, brother, and it's growing by the south. And listen, I am glad for everybody that truly gets saved. Really, I am. I'm not judging Brian Houston. He might be sincere. He may be just messed up and deceived by the devil. But I tell you one thing, he flat don't know what he's talking about on that. Thing. Let me tell you what the book said. There is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved than by that name of the Lord. I'm not making this up. This ain't my opinion. Jesus said, I am the door by me if if any man enter in, he shall be saved. If any man try to come up some other way, same as the thief, the robber, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. Either Jesus was wrong or Brian Houston's wrong. Oh, why do you have to be critical? I didn't start it. They're the ones that equated Allah with God, brother. I'm just taking up for the Lord and what's right. Amen. If it causes you trouble, all I can say is cause you trouble. We need a little persecution once in a while. Sure. Ain't gonna kill you. Amen. They don't believe in hell. Don't believe in hell. Don't believe in divine wrath, judgment day, no judgment seat of Christ. No such thing as that. A church in southern England years ago, <laughs> years and years ago, had some wall paint, one of them old, one of them old uh, churches like the Renaissance way back hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they hired, they were digging through some rubble and found a bill where they had hired some people to come in and redo their, their church, you know, them, the old paintings that they had on the wall. And here was what they said on the order. Wall painting. First, renovate heaven. Make it look shiny and good on the, on the painting. Adjust the stars. Wash the servant of the high priest. Brighten up the flames of hell. Put on a new tail on the devil and fix up the looks of the damned and fix the looks of the Ten Commandments. You know what they said? They said, look, we're hiring you people. These old paintings old. You come in here, make them flames of hell look hotter. Make the, make the uh, high priest look sharper. Make the devil's tail stand out. See the people burning in hell. Make it look real. That's what they did back nowadays. Nowadays, there's no devil. There's no, no, you know, people in hell. This, you'll never see them people give out a track that talks about hell. Never hear a sermon on hell. Never hear a sermon on the premillennial coming of Christ. It's too divisive, too much argument. We, we're not interested in when he, when he comes or how he comes. We just want to be, you know, a bunch of bull like that. I'm telling you, they fix it up, brother, and me and you ought to do the same thing in our lives. We ought to shine this thing up real good. 
focus in real good on the judgment of God, uh, the flames of fire, the flames of hell still real. There is still a real devil. There is still a real, real flames in hell. People are still going there when they die. Heaven is still beautiful and bright and glorious. Jesus is still on the throne. And brother, uh, uh, renovate our view of what God said in this Bible still true. They got all these songs nowadays that comes out that if you don't know you're listening to a Christian station, that's right. you don't know if it's Christian music. That's right, I listened to one for a long time and I said, that's Christian? Yeah. I'm talking about Lauren Daigle and all of them before it's over with here. Yeah, you're right. Chill out now. You're right. uh, there's our truck driver right there, amen. He brought $1,000, hallelujah. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. I'm just getting through my introduction. Good all to right, see you, man. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Really, that's been going about 15 minutes. But I'm telling you, these truck drivers are coming halfway through service. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you tonight, bro, listen, they sing a whole song, and they sing the whole song. It was you. You are my everything. You lift me up. You make me feel. You my, well, who, who are you talking about? Come on now. You know why they're doing that? They're doing that to get the world to buy their records. That's right. Don't get nervous on me. Hey, listen, if a song don't say Jesus and don't say God and don't say about, how do you know it's something? That might be your boyfriend. Yeah. I'm just so high on you. I'm so high on you. Oh, you melt me. Well, who are you talking about? Your neighbor? Yeah. Some old skank down there at the club somewhere you met. I'm telling you, brother, I, hey, hey, you don't sing a song that don't even say who you sing about. And you know these dumb Christians will buy it and then you're trying to cross over so the secular world will buy your records and the stupid Christians ain't got no more sense to think you're talking about God and the dumb sinners ain't got no more sense than to think you're talking about the boy and you sell it to all of them. That's right, that's right, brother. Amen, brother. I'm telling you, old Philippian jailer, you know what he did? He is in there, brother. He about ready to commit suicide, and he pulled out his sword like that. Paul hollered out, hey, man, hold on. Do thyself no harm. And they went running in there, and you know what he done? He called for a light. He called for a light and they got down and prayed and I, I, they said like Charles Wesley when he wrote, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing thy great redeemer's praise that lines up with David's songs. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let all things be done to the glory of God. Praise ye the Lord. Let songs be sung in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Singing, making grace and melody in your heart to the Lord. I got some. I got some that goes that, that goes like and it's Christian. I got some like that. And then I got one where these people come out and they say, All right. The blue group's coming in. We're going back to the back in the days when these people were growing up, and about that time, somebody hits that cowbell. I always did like them cowboys. They go, ding, 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 bah! And the saxophone hit, and the guy comes in and says, I know you won't leave me, but I refuse to let you go. But really, in church. In the house of God, people. You ain't gonna believe it. The next group comes out and say, just beat it, just beat it. Michael Jackson! Lord have mercy. I'd rather hear, I don't know you wanna leave me than Michael Jackson. And, uh, and then a rap group comes out and say, uh, clean on the outside, clean on the inside, clean. something dirty on the inside, dirty on the outside, whatever. But some old rap song like that in church on Sunday morning. Is that right? Where is your hometown? Oh, man. Keep your eye on this guy right here. Yeah. Amen. Hey, man. You never know. <laughs> okay, you're legal. Did you come across the wall? <laughs> Listen, hey, did you know what? There, there's stuff going on today. We ought to thank God we got enough sense to know the right spirit. 
I thank God for that song, uh, the song we sing. And, and, and you know me, I ain't stupid. I mean, some of them songs them people write are okay. They really are. Some of them songs, that some of them that are contemporary are, are decent songs, some of them. But then here they go, good Lord, yeah, with right. some crazy something or another uh, that uh, you, you can't, people, you can't, that's, uh, that stuff's on 106.9, you can't tell me that that's right. You can't tell me that's right. Amen. I ain't trying to be ugly. I love them people. I love the, the ministry they had over there for years. You can't tell me that music is right. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Ask the Lord if it is. The people our old-time religion will convict people of sin. Yes, sir. That boy ran in there and he fell down and said, Sirs, I know you want to leave me. No, he didn't. He said, what must I do to be saved? He got down on his knees and said, what do I got to do to get saved? Hey, you know George Whitfield? George Whitfield was a great preacher. One of the greatest preachers in the history of our country is George Whitfield. And he tried to find the Lord and couldn't find the Lord and he finally got saved. And Charles Wesley put a put a uh, influence on him. And that old boy, uh, he, he, he got saved and he preached all over this country. And Benjamin Franklin said, I paced him off on a clear night. You could hear him one mile away. That was back in the open field. They didn't have factories and trucks and airplanes and stuff. And he said, that old boy would stand in one of them hollers. They'd have it at, at, a, at a natural uh, amphitheater. That's it. And I like that where his voice would project out like that. And Ben Franklin paced him off, said I could hear every word he said at a mile away. Son, that old boy preached. And I mean, he didn't say, he didn't say, well, now, now I'm not going to answer that question. And, and we're just all about love. And I'm not the judge, Larry. And I'm not, I'm, Larry, I don't judge. And God didn't call me to judge, Larry. I, I mean, well, well what, God didn't call you to do nothing. He didn't call you to do nothing. Uh, and if he called you, he called you to preach the Bible. And if he didn't call you to preach the Bible, you ain't called to preach. I'm telling you, people say, well, people out this ministry and that, man, listen, a God called preacher. What's a preacher supposed to preach? Preach the word. Be in season, out of sea, uh, uh, in reprove, rebuke. And when it's easy, when it's hard, when they like it, when they don't like it, when it's popular, when it's not popular, he's called to preach the word. Amen. Amen. He said, a man told uh, one night, he, uh, there's an old slave. And the story went that. Uh, Every day, this rich man would pass this slave working out in the field. It had been 100, 200 years ago. And he'd drive down through there, and the old, the old slave was singing, I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm saved. And the rich man looked at him, and he said, Man, you're happier than I am. What do I got to do to have what you got? And he, the slave said, You go down there and go across that fence and jump down in that mud puddle, mud puddle and then come up, and the Lord will save you. He said, I ain't going to do it. He went on down the road that way. And uh, next day he come down, that guy's out there singing, man, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. And the guy said, man, I want that. I want what you've got. What do I got to do to get what that? He said, go down there and cross over that fence and jump in that mud and water in it and come up and God will save you. He said, you're crazy. I ain't doing that for nobody. Went on on his horse. Finally one day, he kept on and on and on and on. Finally, one day he came down and he said, man, what I got to do to get what you've got? He said, I told you, go down there and jump across that fence and get in that mud and God will save you. He said, all right, I'm going to do it. I don't care. And he took off down there, jumped off his horse, started climbing over that fence and the slave said, hey, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Now you're ready for God to save you. I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to give up everything in this world. You don't have to be willing to do anything to get saved. You don't have to do anything to get saved, but you've got to be willing to. You've got to the point where you come, Lord, I don't care. God, I don't care what I've got to quit. God, I don't care what I've got to give up. God, I don't care where I have to go, what I have to do. Dear God, I want Jesus more than anything. That's what old-time religion is. When you get it the old-time way, buddy, it ain't really you get it, it gets you. And this last thing I'll say is this tonight. The message is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Morality may keep you out of jail, but it takes the blood of Jesus to keep you out of hell. There's an old preacher down in Alabama, preached for 50 years, 
And he preached and preached and preached for many, many years. And he's dying, getting ready to die. And his son was at his grave. And he come, uh, uh, and, 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 the, and the father said, I, I'm, I'm ready to die. And it's sort of, sort of scary. And tell me something. And his son got down beside him and he said, Father, he said, you've done more than anybody I know. I don't know anybody that's done more for the Lord than you have. You've done a great work. You shouldn't be afraid to die. And the, the daddy looked back at him and he said, don't you tell me that. Don't tell me about what I've done. Tell me about the blood. Tell me about the blood. Nothing will do for a dying man. But what can wash away my sin? Nothing but I done got my mind made up. I'm listen, I'm getting older, and you are too, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna die one of these days. I done got my mind made up unless I get it quick. If I know I know what my dying words are gonna be by the help of the Lord, I'm gonna just say, Lord, remember the blood. And remember that Jesus died for me. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. And buddy, if that don't get you in, there ain't no getting in. You can't say, well, I've lived a good life. I'm a good person. I'm a... No, 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 no. Brother, nothing can get, the message of the old time religion is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. They said one time there's this man out on the desert and he was rich. And he's really, really thirsty, about to die of thirst. And he's almost dying of thirst, and he paid a lot of money for one little drink of water and then died a little while later. And they found out after he died, he didn't know it, but a thousand feet away was a well he could have got to. Many, many thousands of people die in this world every hour, every day. For those cheap, some of trying to, trying to buy their way out on some kind of drug or, or on alcohol or something to drown their problems away and they don't realize it just a few feet away. It's an old-fashioned church, an old-fashioned Bible, and an old-fashioned Savior, an old-fashioned preacher that'll tell them how to be ready to meet the Lord. You know what old-time religion will do? Old-time religion will make you love the Lord and you won't look down on other people like I'm better than you are. People th look at us a lot of time like that. Like we think we're, we don't think we're better than nobody. The truth is, there's probably a lot of people out there don't even go to church that live maybe better moral lives than some of us. You know, that's probably true. Fine, upstanding citizens. They, some of them people up there in Michigan and Holland, and some of them, some of them uh, we call them people, yeah, just Quakers and them, them Amish people aren't, man, some of them people straight as, they don't have a TV, they don't have electricity. I mean, uh, as far as morals, they don't get on the internet, nothing like that. But you know what? We don't think we're better than nobody else. We don't. We think we've trusted in the blood and the blood paid for our sins. Amen. That's old time religion. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> well, scream my throat at you. You'll have to get the you have to get it on YouTube. Let's bow our heads for prayer tonight. She's come to play. Amen. 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 Let's do business with the Lord tonight. Let's do business with the Lord. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're here tonight. God spoke to your heart. You want to just come pray? Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. 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 Let's pray tonight. Let's pray tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.